This isn't a scaremongering video, this is a very real problem with potentially epidemic proportions if we don't do something to alter it. Now I'm going to try and keep this information clear, concise, interesting. Regardless whether or not you do your own nails at home or you go to a salon or you're a nail tech or beauty professional, I have got some really important information for you in this video and I've taken it from some of the top sources and advice from the top sources in the industry. So please, please do watch this. I cannot stress that enough because if something doesn't change soon, it could result in products actually being banned. And we're talking the products that we love and use every day if you're a professional. We need to stop that from happening. And the way to do it is to take action now. So in the last week, the British Association of Dermatologists published a very damning and worrying press release. And it was with regards to nail allergies or allergies caused by nail products. What What's worrying about this is how prevalent it really is, how many people are suffering and people don't even realise that they're suffering. This is just the results of people that have gone to see dermatologists. So many of us don't even make it to dermatologists. So I'm just going to give you some quick fire facts about what the problem is, how it's affecting people like you and I and what we need to do right now to stop it getting any worse. Because you don't know if you are just one set of nails away from a problem that's going to start that will affect you for the rest of your life. So I've made some notes that's purely for the fact that I want to get these facts and figures right just to give them to you. There will be some coming up on the screen. This is just a tiny bit of the video to give you an idea of why I'm giving you the advice that I am. So this report stems from an audit of 13 UK and Irish dermatology units during 2017 and there were a total of 4,931 patients. Of those patients, allergies were seen in 60 percent of them due to nail enhancements or nail products. That's really, really worrying. I approached people through my personal Facebook and through Twitter asking for any pictures that I could use to show you what varying stages of the allergies or reactions look like. I am going to show you these during the video. Some of them will be not very nice to look at because some are very, very advanced and severe. So I'm just going to give you that heads up now. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm going to put some images up on the screen now. So just to give you a heads up, if you are a little more sensitive in your sort of demeanor with regards to things like this, you might not want to look at some of these because some of them are pretty shocking, to be honest with you. So of that 60% of the people that had reactions down to nail products, 33% of the cases, that's a third, were due to sensitivities developed through their occupation. So basically what it means is these people have developed reactions because of their job and the majority of them were nail techs. Now this problem isn't just nail techs as I'll show you in some of the images that I've got. That includes people that do their nails at home, it includes people that go to nail techs, it includes people that go to non-standard salons which is a salon that doesn't abide by the correct guidelines of what is safe practice, safe products, professional practice, things like that. Now these pictures are from a range of nail techs of their own fingers, it's from nail techs of clients that have come to them from other places and it's from people who've done their nails at home as well. That is what can happen and it's not like a, oh it won't happen to me, it can happen to everyone and it's happening to some amazing nail techs in this industry and I'm seeing their pictures online a lot and I'd seen these coming before this report was released. So what this video about is going to be very positive, I'm going to give you the top things that tend to cause issues with regards to starting with allergies and how to avoid them because some of you won't even realise that what you have is an allergy, you'll think it's problems with your skin or dry skin and things like that and you need to get on these things fast. The best thing you can do is avoid them starting. Starting. Of the pictures I've shown you, of the nail techs I've spoken to who've developed reactions, every single one of them, every single one, bar one, and that was Carol, didn't wear gloves when doing nail procedures on people or nail services. So they only started wearing gloves once a problem had occurred. By that point your body's already started and developed a reaction to a product, so all you're going to be doing then is trying to fight the fire. It's better to prevent the fire starting in the first place. There are things you can look out for when you go to a nail tech or when you do things yourself at home, and as a nail tech, things you can do to avoid this becoming an issue. And they're really simple. A lot of education still doesn't teach this and I think with this report coming out that will start to change. I certainly hope it will because this is literally career ending for a lot of people. There's a picture that I'm going to show you that's going to come up in the screen in a moment. It is life changing because sometimes it can be one bad appointment 
affects a person's nails for the rest of their life. And I'm putting the pictures on the screen now. This poor lady had one set of acrylics that were only on her nails for 24 hours, 13 years ago. And this is how her nails still look now. And this is what we need to avoid. And I do want to see how big an issue this is worldwide. If you've had any problems with regards to nail products that you've used at home or at a salon, can you please leave me a comment down below in the comment section, letting me know what service it was you had on your nails done, what the impact was, how did it start to affect you, how long did it take, and whether or not you're a professional, you went to a nail salon or you did them yourself at home, because I am going to be taking these figures back and giving them to some people that are trying to make a difference in the industry Personally, I think the reason the problem has got so big is because nails are such a big thing now. You know, they're on the catwalk, they're in magazines. We all love to have nice nails. The nail industry has boomed, which is fantastic for people like me because I love it. However, with that, the rise in allergies has absolutely gone through the roof as well. So this first bit I'm going to cover now is going to be directed mainly at nail techs, but also at clients. It's something to watch out for when you go for a service. And if you look out for these things and try to avoid them, it will help you to protect protect your hands and your nails and prevent you too developing an allergy. So when you actually are having something like acrylic nails, now acrylic the official term for it is liquid and powder and that's because you have a brush that's dipped in a monomer which is the liquid and then it goes into a polymer which is the powder. So you have a liquid brush dipped into a powder, it becomes a little ball that's popped onto the nail and they put it around, push it into place and shape it and then it's filed afterwards. A huge problem and I have seen this on a lot of videos, I do think it depends on who you're trained with and things like that whether or not it's deemed as acceptable but this is reported to be a big cause in the rise of allergies is when people are doing these nails and the brush with the liquid on it and the product on it is not just being applied to your nail it's actually touching the skin and the living tissue around the nail on the finger and depending on your body you could get a reaction after the first appointment you could get a reaction after three months one nail tech was newly qualified had only been doing the job three months before she developed a reaction that she is still left with now whenever she uses the products however it can, like some others I know, take years. You might be fortunate and you don't react to it. However, isn't it just best to make sure that we do best practice to avoid the starting in the first place? So be mindful when you're doing nails or if you're a client having your nails done, you don't want that brush with the liquid being put on the skin around your nails. It's putting you at risk of developing a reaction. This one's kind of more for nail techs, but it's something worth bearing in mind if you are a consumer. You really want to be using a dust extraction system. I'll explain a little bit more about this and why. It's not just a faff of companies trying to sell you something. Thing. It is something that's really necessary. Now the ideal scenario would be to have a HEPA filtration system. So that's a dust extraction system with HEPA dust filters in it and at least a one kilo active carbon filter. Now these things can be very expensive, that's something you want to aim for. If you want to be doing this long term, that's something you want to be looking at getting. However, if you can't stretch that at the moment, then you do want to be looking at using any sort of dust filtration system that you can. Now I used to have a dust filter or a dust fan that I used to bring out, put on my desk when I was doing client snails, and then put it away again afterwards and clean it. My one was really big and cumbersome and it wasn't that great. It did sort of get quite a bit of the dust, but not all of it. Recently, I've been using this as a virus dust extractor. I'll put a link in the description of where you can purchase it and you can dispose of the filters that go on the top of it. It's a much cheaper option if you can't actually yet afford something like a full HEPA filtration system and certainly it's going to help. Anything that removes that dust away from you, away from your skin and away from your nail desk is going to make a huge difference and help. When you're doing things like filing the nails, now this especially applies if you do things like acrylic and gels and you have like like I'm wearing. I wear poly gel with gel polish over the top so when it comes to me needing to do a rebalance or redo my nails to fill in that bit of the bottom which some people call an infill or a backfill I call it a rebalance because I rebalance the whole shape of the nail but when we do that we have to file off the whole surface we don't soak off. When you file off that surface what actually happens that sticky layer on gel so you know when we talk about applying glitter onto gel so you apply your gel cure it in a lamp it comes out the lamp you've got a nice sticky layer that you can put glitters and pigments and things on that sticky layer is actually a byproduct of the curing process and it's uncured gel because gel products cure from the inside out when they're curing in the lamps. So what happens is when it cures from the inside out, the hard bit of cured gel is there and it has this sticky layer which is leftover product. That isn't a problem so much if you're applying glitter on it, encapsulating the whole lot in top coat. When it comes to actually filing off those nails, however, that dust will contain uncured gel and that makes you more prone to reaction. You need to make sure that you're clearing 
clearing that dust away and I don't mean just like at the end of a service I mean as soon as you've finished filing what we see a lot in the industry is not just reactions in hands even people that wear gloves end up developing reactions all down their arms because you have this dust left over from rebalancing or infilling the nails you put your arms down on the desk when you continue painting and then you're getting this dust stuck to your arms the effects of that can build up and can result in an allergy and skin problems and dermatitis and all sorts of things like that so ideally you'll be using a dust filtration system as soon as you've done that. If it's a removable one, I'd take it away from the desk. If it isn't, it's fine, it's incorporated in. But what I would do as soon as you finish filing those nails is wipe your desk clean of any of the dust so you can continue the service without having to put your arms or the client's hands in that dust. Now, if you're starting out, I'm going to say ideally you want a dust extraction system. However, there are some really good things you can do if you're not yet ready to buy one you don't have the funds available there are steps you can take to protect yourself and your client now i used to use towels rolled on my desk for clients to lean their hands on and then use some desk roll over the top of it if you're doing your nails at home you can use kitchen roll or kitchen towel but basically as soon as you've finished filing those nails whether they're yours or your clients fold up that tissue so all the dust stays inside it and put it in a bin with a lid as nail techs we should always be using bins with lids just to stop vapors and things like that when we remove excess monomer from our bowls make sure that area you're working on is dust free before you continue and the same if you're doing your nails at home if you do do your nails at home then make sure I know when I do mine in here when I finished filing I actually remove all the dust off my desk before I continue on and that's just self-preservation to be honest with you as nail techs a big place that we really do see the reactions is on this bit of the finger at the side here which you'll see in some of the photos the tip of the finger here the thumb and quite often that's from holding our acrylic brush if you've got any excess monomer on the ferrule and if you have any excess monomer or liquid acrylic liquid on there and you're holding your hands on it then it can actually start to build up and cause a reaction the other place can be on your wrong hand or your non-dominant hand and that's from holding the client that you can see reactions build up but you hold the client's finger and you're working on it and that's quite common too gloves will help massively with this now for gloves really what you need to be doing is looking at getting gloves that are a minimum Minimum of 0.19 millimeters thick and I personally prefer to use nitrile I have a reaction to latex and sometimes you don't know if customers do too I love these ones it's not sponsored I've been using these since my salon I will put a link in the description however I've been in touch with the company today to find out exactly how thick these are and these are 0.11 millimeters so they're shy of the amount if you really really want to be protective you can double glove which is where two pairs of gloves and if you've already developed a reaction to products then I would definitely recommend doing that if you've already developed a really nasty reaction to products and you still need to carry on working then a lot of people do things like use a barrier cream loads of techs recommend the working hands cream I think it's by O'Keefe's I'll put a link to that down in the description too and then using something like bamboo gloves before they apply a set of nitrile gloves prevention is the key to stopping you developing something here sticking with that another problem that tends to happen with clients is when we remove the sticky layer off the top of gel or if you doing this to yourself at home you might get a pad with your isopropyl alcohol on and you've got your finger and you're just there going Wee! what you really really want to be doing is getting that pad and I love these plastic back pads I love them so much they aren't the cheapest but you only need to use like three per person so you really don't have to worry and that's in like a full service it curves around it's got a plastic back on the back of it so product can't seep through onto your fingers and I literally just get around that cuticle area and wiggle it just back and forth as I pull off I'm not taking that sticky layer left and pushing it over the whole of the top of the skin because doing that day in day out will cause problems now obviously for clients more often than not it can take them longer to develop a reaction than it can for techs because we are back to back with clients all day so we're with this stuff constantly but as a client it's something you need to protect yourself against as well a really big one that you tend to see with a lot of people especially when they start out or when you're in a hurry and things like that is if you're applying gel polish or acrylic and it goes over the edge of the nail and onto the skin people get their own fingernail and just wipe it away because then it looks neat however you're left with uncured product on that skin and on the other nail and if that's not removed then you quite often see that people start with reactions on the underside of the nail and this bit where your nail sticks and has sometimes a bit tender bit of skin that's called your hypernicium so at the end of a service on a client or if you're doing your own nails make sure you clean off any dust from the underside of your nails or any excess product like that with a nail brush or you can even give it a wipe underneath you want to make sure that you've got no product left under those nails because someone might wash their hands and there's still something left there if they haven't got a nail brush and scrub 
loved it and they're going away for hours in the day until they have a shower or a bath and that's just building up and that's why we tend to see a lot of problems like that tend to start here first and then spread. Most of these problems do come from uncured product so when I say uncured product I mean acrylic that's not fully set and please bear in mind that some acrylic brands actually do take up to 48 hours to fully completely set so they look completely set when you leave the salon they feel like they're fine but to fully harden and set it can take up to 48 hours. With gel polish products it only has to be 50% cured to feel hard and look cured but it's not fully cured. It's really really important that you use the right lamp for your gel polish. Now I'm not afraid to admit in a bygone time that I've thought it has been a marketing ploy by some brands to make you use their entire system. However, normally big brands are very good at protecting themselves by making sure that their products cure in their lamps. They've looked at it, they've trialed it. Some of the really big companies have their own research and development labs or they pay to outsource to make sure that the lamps are curing their product. No one lamp fits all. It's down to wavelength of the UV or LED light, it's down to the brilliance and intensity of the LED and UV light, and it's down to, and prepare yourself, this is getting a bit geeky now, it's down to something called the photo initiators that are in the gel polish. Now every brand of gel polish and quite often different colours within that brand will have a different amount of photo initiators, and photo initiators are the things that react to the light to make the gel polish set. Like I said, a gel polish only has to be cured by 50% to look and feel cured. So you've got this great lamp, you've got a load of different brands of gel polish, you try it out and unless you know the photo initiators, the wavelength, the brilliance, the intensity, you won't actually know if it's definitely curing and so that can cause major issues as well. If you do get any product on the skin and I always check before I put my hand in the lamp or if I'm doing my friend's nails before I put their hand in the lamp, I always make sure that none of that product has seeped down into the side walls of those lateral folds. If it has, take a brush and I always say this, take a brush dipped in nail polish remover or acetone and clean up those side walls. It's not just for the way it looks, it's to prevent reactions. Don't use a fingernail and really I don't even find an orange wood stick very good for these sort of things. You want a brush where you can really get it out and make sure it's clean. If you do do your own nails at home, make sure that you understand exactly how you're supposed to use that product. Read the instructions, understand what you're doing, keep that product off the skin and use the recommended lamp with the product if you need to use one. If you're doing acrylic nails, keep that brush clean so that the liquid is only on the actual bristles of the brush or the nib of the brush and make sure that when it comes to getting rid of any unused monomer or liquid that you soak it up with a like some tissue or some kitchen roll and it goes into a bin with a closed lid and make sure you don't have any on your hands give your hands a wash afterwards as well if you like to get your nails done by a professional then check out your professional first ask them for a copy of their qualifications and what courses they've done i never had any issues with anyone asking me that in fact i actually had a folder on my facebook page and on my website that showed all of my certificates so people could see what they were getting before they booked in with me and finally what to do if you do have signs or you think after watching this video you might have signs at the start of an allergic reaction i would say immediately go and get advice from a dermatologist now I'm assuming in the States I don't know quite how this works but I'm assuming in the States you can get a referral straight to a dermatologist in the UK you need to go to your GP or your doctor and say that you're concerned that you've developed an allergic reaction to a product they need to eliminate what it is that's causing the reaction now this is the tip of the iceberg there's lots of other things you can do to avoid this happening but these tend to be the most crucial things that are causing problems for people so I just wanted to sort of get in there quickly while this is in the news and help spread some awareness to protect all you guys <laughs> And all the fellow nail techs out there. I need to say a big thank you to all the people that submitted pictures for this video. Thank you very much guys. I am going to put your names up on this video as well. Now just to say I don't want this to be a scary negative video. This is really positive. It's something that's coming out. We're getting a heads up about it. Let's make the change now because this really really could have devastating effects on the industry. We wouldn't want to see our favourite products being banned because they're causing people to have allergic reactions because they're not used properly and that's the key here so thank you so much for watching today I know it's a little bit of a heavy video but it's something we really want to actually get that message out there and I have a really good medium to do this and help fellow techs and professionals in the industry as well as all you guys who might be clients or DIYers at home I love to be able to use this platform to try and educate where I can and have a lot of fun as well in the process I will be coming back next week with a nail art video just for you guys I've had some people requesting florals 
Wars. How does everyone feel about that? Let me know in the comments section down below what you would like to see next week because I love to hear your suggestions. I want to say a huge shout out to my VIPs, especially Glenda Anderson. Thank you for joining as a Natasha Lee VIP. If you enjoy my channel and my videos and you want to become a part of the VIP family, then head on over to natashalee.vip where you can get behind the scenes access, shout outs, different rewards and tiers. And I'm really, really grateful because you guys are amazing and you've been such a help recently with the channel and help me keep producing my videos. So thank you guys. If that's not for you, then do not worry. Thank you very much for watching. If you're not yet subscribed, if you'd like to head on over and click subscribe and next to it is a teeny tiny little bell icon. If you click that bell icon and you're on a mobile device, it should notify you every time I upload. If you're on a computer or a laptop, then if you have a look, it comes up with an option that it automatically selects to notify you occasionally. If you could change that to all the time, that would be amazing. Because I only do one video a week. You don't want to miss it. So thank you very much, everyone. I hope you've learned something from this video and you can use it going forward. And I will look forward to seeing you all very, very soon.